Lastly, let's talk about how to represent a relation using digraphs. So a digraph is really just a, re a directed graph, and we haven't talked much about graphs, um, but essentially it's just a pictorial representation of a relation. And it's directed, which means it gives me arrows that go in the direction that shows me the relation. So if A is, has an arrow to B, then obviously A comma B is in my relation. And really that's all it is. So I've sort of um, defined it for you officially. V is the set of vertices, which is the points that I put in green. And um, E is the set of the edges that connects them, etc. But really we're just saying, hey, all of the green points are your values that are in your relation. And the arrows tell you which values are connected to which other values. So if I wanted to look at what relation is represented by the digraph, I would say the relation is, and I'm gonna just start with A so that I try to keep it as organized as possible so I don't forget anything, um, but A, here has an arrow going towards B. So A comma B is an ordered pair in my relation. And I'm going to go ahead and do all of them that are leaving A first, because I know A is gonna be that first value. So A goes to B, does A go to C? Well, this one tells me that yes, A does map to C. And then does A map to D? No, because even though A, D are connected, notice the arrow is actually pointing from D to A. So A, D is not in my relation. So now I'm going to move on to B. And coming from B is absolutely nothing. So B doesn't map to anything. Even though things map to B, notice there are no out arrows um, coming out of B. And notice up here, um, an initial vertex would be obviously the vertex that it's starting from going to a terminating vertex. So we can see that B is only a terminating vertex and it is a terminating vertex for actually three separate points. So let's move on to C since B didn't get us anywhere. Does C map to A? It does right here. So C comma A is in my relation. Does C map to B? It does. So C comma B, and notice this guy, C maps to itself, so C comma C is in my relation. Does C map to D? No, it doesn't. And then the only things left are D. So does D map to A? You betcha, D comma A. And does D map to B? Yes, it does. And does D map to anything else? Nope, because I used a different color and so I can see that I've covered everything on the graph. Now let's look at just one more example in reverse. I have given you, in this case, the ordered pairs that are in the relation, and I want you to draw the digraph, and then I want you to tell me a little bit about the uh, properties of this digraph, which we'll go through together. So let's go ahead and draw this. We have one comma one, which means one maps to itself. Then we have one comma two, which we, means one goes to two, and we should have an arrow that indicates that one is actually going to two. And then we have two that goes to two, and two goes to three, And again, whoops, let me try that again. Two goes to three. And then we have three goes to one. Three goes to two. So notice this one, I kind of cheated a little bit because I knew what was coming. So you just make kind of two that are not quite straight, but a little bit curved. So three goes to two and three goes to itself. So there is my digraph. Oh my goodness, how beautiful it is. What an artist I am. I'm in the wrong profession. So now let's look, is this reflexive? Remember reflexive means that A comma A is in your relation. Is that true? Yes, because 
one maps to itself, two maps to itself, and three maps to itself. So check, check, yes it is. Is it symmetric? It is not symmetric because although one does map to two, as we can see here by the arrow, two does not map to one, so that'd be a big fat no. Is it anti-symmetric? Remember, anti-symmetric says if one is equal, or I'm sorry, if one comma two is in there and two comma one is in there, that means that obviously one and two are equal. So let's take a look. Do we have an example? Two comma three is here, three comma two is here, but three and two are not equal to one another, so not anti-symmetric. And finally, is it transitive? Remember, transitive says that let's say one maps to one and one maps to two, then two must map to one, and obviously it's not that either.